Welcome to Lipsing High School. Tonight's matchup between the Delta Jefferson Wildcats and the Clemson Vikings. I'm Dan Garlock alongside Dar Nevergal and Dar. It is what a good friend of ours used to say, the most glorious time of the year. It's high school basketball postseason time. We have sectional action tonight. And we have a good opening matchup. You know, when you go through sectionals, you, know, you can get those mismatches. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and some things have changed um, over the past year or two with the OHSAA starting this year with the higher seed hosting instead of everything being neutral site. But that has led to a matchup tonight against a Lipstick and Delphus Jefferson team that are one very familiar with one another and two very evenly matched. I, I would think so. And you, you know, on paper you look at them, you got a couple of big scores on both sides, you know, for Lipstick and for Delphus Jefferson. You know, they did meet not too long ago, just a couple of weeks ago, and Delphus, or Lipstick came out on top 72-61 in that game. But, you know, I expect a really good matchup between these two teams. And, and you know, on this side here, you know, nice little crowd, not, not you know, too bad for, for a Wednesday night. You know, but I expect a really good matchup between the two of them. Take a look at tonight's starters for both teams, starting first for the Wildcats of Delta Jefferson. They're going to start number two, Mason Wiltsey. Number four, Isaac Gallmeyer. Number 22, Kellen Carter. Number 24, Carter Agner. And at number 32, Elijah Petty. The opening tip will be controlled by the Vikings. They're going to start number two, Jace Breck. Number five, Brevin Brandt. Number 10, Nick Schrader. Number 21, Ty Lammers. And number 23, Tavis. Uh, ooh, I messed up. I'm going to mess it up already, Dar. Uh, we Davis. got it. Bajario. Bajario, thank you. We got yep. the pronunciation a couple of times pre-game, <laughs> and it already left my head. Lipstick gets the scoring started early with a nice two-pointer coming from Breck. Is there on top, 2-0. Breck averaged about 15 points a game. And, you know, if Vikings get off a fast start, there's a nice backdoor pass right inside there for Delphi Jefferson. And it was Carter Agner, the first team NWC. A player, uh, he averages just over 15 a game. Nice job on the inside. Lipstick going to launch the three-pointer. That one's going to be off. Agner goes up for the rebound. So I, I expect Vic, you know, Lipstick, if they can get off to a fast start in this one here, try to put it away as early as they can. Now, there's an NBA three right there. I was watching him in pregame, Nate, and he was hitting three or four of them from out there. Elijah Petty has the first Dale's Concrete three-pointer of the contest. Puts Delphi Jefferson on top, 5-2. to two. You mentioned these two teams played not that long ago. It was the first week of February, and it was a high-scoring affair. Both of these teams not used to that high-scoring. Usually see them averaging right around the high 40s points per game. But a 72-61 matchup that first time around, and I imagine we'll see the offenses on point again here tonight. Yeah, I think so. You know, Lipsick will try to go on the inside, just as they did on that one right there. You know, the Delta Jefferson will fire up some threes on the outside. Ty Lammers puts that one in to draw Lipsick within one. Yeah, Lammers, their second team all Northwest Conference and second team PCL as well. Almost a deja vu situation as Carter Agner gets the feed on the inside, lets the defender fly right by, gets that one in for two more. Right now, the defenses don't have much of an answer. No, they don't, and they're not even shutting down that middle at all on Agner. I mean, he's just going right in there. Turnaround jumper, good. Jace Breck now has four here in the quarter. Just over two minutes has passed here to begin this game. It is 7-6. Both offenses having no trouble finding their footing. Patty going to try a three-pointer again. This one's going to be off. Almost saved by the Wildcats as Wilkie had gotten out there, but he had just touched the out-of-bounds line and will go back to Lipsy. I'll tell you what, Ben. Petty just likes to fire him up from out there, and he's, you know, a 43% free or three-point shooter from out there, too. 21 for 49 coming into this game. And he doesn't even bother getting close to the line. Now Lipsick with the basketball looking to take the lead. I think Lipsy's going to settle into a little bit of half-court offense here. Brandt loses his feet and kicks it, trying to see if maybe he can sneak one by as he's trying to get it to Bizarro, and that one is going to go back to the Wildcats. They have the one-point lead here. Full-court pressure coming from Lipsick. Just gets that in right before that five-second count. A good job by the Vikings on that one there just to force Delphus Jefferson to use up a little bit of time to get the ball across the court. Wiltsy with the basketball, moves it down along the wing, back up top to Petty. We already know he's not afraid to take that shot. Decides to pass that one up. 
Jefferson swings it around the perimeter, gets an open look. But Gallmeyer can't connect. Lipstick trying to go up oh, tempo. Nice move. A great hesitation move by Lammers. He gets that one off the glass. Boy, Lammers just went right by his defender and just ducked underneath of him to lay that one in. It's a great move by that young man. Lipstick back on top one, 8 7. Petty with it in the corner. Tries to get it inside as he was trying to connect with Kellen Carter, but we're going to have our first whistle of the game. This one is going to go Ooh. on number 10, Nick Schrader. It's going to be his first, team first. Schrader, the junior, six foot junior for this Lipstick team. A lot of, a lot of bodies in on that play. Diego Ramalai checking into the game. See Lammers takes a seat. Lammers, second leading scorer of the team, just under 15 a game. He's second team NWC, second team PCL. So big part of what this Viking team will do here this evening. Wilty has to gather that one in as it went through his hands, able to save it. Jefferson trying to find an opening somewhere. Cross court pass to Petty. He's going to drive, pull up jumper, no good. Fight for the rebound, comes down to Lipson. Breck brings it up, passes it off. Three-point try on its way. That one's no good. But a great hustle play, able to strip that one away, gets it back for a deep three by Brandt. That one's going to be off. Ball is loose. It looks like it's going to be kicked off of Agner, and it is. So it'll stay with Lipsick after the scramble. I tell you, both these teams coming in on, on modest losing streaks. You know, one uh, lost four in a row for Delphus Jefferson, three in a row for Lipsick. So the key for this one right here is can you get off to that fast start? Can you get that early lead and hang on to it? Brack was trying to see if he couldn't get the defender to leave his feet, but unfortunately couldn't keep his feet still. So that's going to be another turnover for the Vikings. Troy Seco's checking in the game for Delphus Jefferson, as is Isaac Rostopher. Scoring slowed down a little bit now after that brisk opening couple minutes. A, almost another turnover and a scramble. Finally, Jefferson comes up with it, ends up in the hands of Agner. Agner, it almost seemed like he forgot he had a dribble there for a second and almost passed it into trouble. But a great heads up play by Tavis Bajarno. Able to get his hands on that one, knock it out of bounds. Going to stay with Delphus Jefferson, though, after all of that. Yeah, there's a lot of action on that play there, just, just to turn around and give it right back to Delphus Jefferson again. Avery Paris has come into the game for the Vikings. And putting tough man-to-man -to -man defense, not giving the Wildcats a lot of room. Wilty has to get rid of it, back in the hands of Agner. Going to try to split the defense, gets it off the glass. That one's going to be no good, ends up in the hands of Schrader. Wildcats on a little bit of a scoring drought right now after being, you know, getting their first seven points fairly easily. Harris hands this one off to Breck, who gets it back up top. Schrader looking to drive, gets cut off, has to kick it back out. A lot of space given that time. Three-point try, no good. Wildcats come up with the rebound. Final 220 of the opening quarter. Let's see with the basketball trying to swing it. And right now, Delphus Jefferson, a little bit out of sorts. They continue to give it back to Lipsick on turnovers. Yeah, they just need to settle themselves down. Like I said, they got a little bit of a drought going here in scoring-wise. They haven't been able to get anything going since they got that seven points right off the bat. Ty Lammers back into the game for Lipsick. And the Vikings with the basketball and a one-point lead. Three-point try on its way. That one's no good. Good box out that time underneath by Seacoast. Jefferson with it as Gallmeyer brings it up, tries to feed Agner down low. Agner kicks it back out. Gallmeyer has to get rid of it. Wilty's going to try a three-pointer. No good. Agner fights for the rebound. Able to go out and get it. Jefferson will have another opportunity. That one was almost another turnover and before it, it finally up. was. Rossford had to throw it away. Harris tries to go the other length of the floor, and it's going to get knocked out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Vikings. Right now, the Wildcats just shooting themselves in the foot. That's three unofficial turnovers I got for them. And, you know, they just are getting themselves into a situation where, the, you know, the Vikings are able to get two or three guys around the ball handler. More substitutions coming into the game. Diego 
Lamla is back into the game for Lipsick. He has the basketball right around top of the key. Paris comes and gets it. Minute 25 left to go here in the opening quarter, and we're going to have a double dribble as it's going to be another turnover. This time it'll be on Lipsick. Yeah, both teams with three unofficial turnovers so far in this game. Elijah Petty coming out of the game as Kellen Carter checks back in. Or no, excuse me, it's actually going to be Carter Agner as Elijah Petty just came over to do the inbounds. It was just over by the Jefferson bench. It looked like he was the one checking out. Goldmeyer with the basketball, looking to drive. It's cut off, has to put it back out. And after Jefferson had a lot of success going to the inside early, Lipsick has done a nice job adjusting. You see another turnover as they try to feed it into the paint once again. That shot's going to be off the front of the rim, chased down by Lipsick. These turnovers are really sh shot these teams as far as rhythm goes. Neither team able to get into any kind of real rhythm. Paris had a small window. He tried to fit that one in and gets taken away. Wallmeyer hands it over to Wiltsy. And Wiltsy had to pass that into a tight, tight uh, space that time. It gets swung back around to him, and he pays it off as he hits the Dale's concrete three-pointer in the quarter. That is the first basket in quite a while for either team at this point. As I said, neither team able to really get into any kind of rhythm because of those turnovers, you know, and not taking very good care of the basketball, you know, as far as their passing goes. And that's really cost them. And we have another whistle. This one is going to go on Isaac Rossifer. Rossifer is going to check out of the game as Carter Agner comes back in. Only the second foul here in this first quarter. Been a fast moving quarter, final 10 seconds here of the first. Three pointer on its way, but I think we're going to have a moving screen first. And actually, that's going to go on Petty as I think Elijah was trying to fight through that screen, causing the contact. So he picks up his first, team second of the quarter. Nine seconds left to go on the inbounds. Turnaround jumper, no good. Agner gets it. Four seconds to go. Long three by Goldmeyer will fall short as I think both teams kind of thought they had a little less time than they did. The first quarter comes to a close. Elvis Jefferson on top, 10-8. to eight. We'll step aside and be back. WOSA. Board is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe and Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. With all Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where Homestyle happens here. Also, like to thank tonight's three point sponsor, Dale's Concrete, Decorative Stamping, and Lipsick. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Welcome back to Lipsick High School. Tonight's sectional matchup underway. One quarter came and went. Dar never go alongside me and Dar. You know, it started off fast paced. We thought the offenses were really going to get flowing. They were hitting shots early. We saw a couple of big three pointers. And then all of a sudden, the defenses kind of bowed their neck a little bit, but it was more the turnovers. It, yeah. was, it was more the mental mistakes taking over and kind of led to the scoring really slowing down. And it certainly did. Not really taking good care of the basketball. They're, you know, throwing into crowds, you know, not keeping their dribble going, you know, different things like that, you know, just taking the teams right out of the rhythm of any kind of game that they had going. Now this young man will shoot it up from anywhere out there, I'll tell you what. Petty was wide open for that three-point shot, couldn't connect. It looked like Gallmeyer was going to be able to bring that rebound in, but it slipped right through his hands and it'll go back to the Vikings. So those turnovers continue to haunt. Because even though that wasn't technically a turnover, it was one of those missed opportunities to keep the offensive uh, side of things going for Delphus. I think both teams need to settle down in some kind of half-court offense a little bit, kind of calm themselves down a little bit. You know, they got off to such a fast start, you know, but then everything went south on them. So now they really need to just calm down. There's another turnover right there, and that was an unforced one too. This one's going to go on Ty Lommers. He just got moving before he was able to get his dribble down. The Lipsick student crowd here, they are, they are out loud. And, you know, this is one of those old style gyms we were kind of talking before the broadcast yeah. are. You know, it's, it seems like time really hasn't touched the, this gym. And 
as Wilty pulls up for the two-pointer. That's now five here in the half for him as Jefferson extends their lead out to four. But one of those things that it does is just that sound. Everything, Everything in here seems to be louder. It seems yeah. to be a bigger echo. That student section, even though, you know, it's not the largest one we've seen. It's one of the louder ones, and you can hear them very, very clearly. Oh, you can, and, and we're, we're seeing that. In our, you know, it's kind of like a cave up here. We're surrounded <laughs> by steel girders everywhere around us. So, you know, everything just echoes back up into this area. Lipsick with the basketball down four. Three-point three try oh. is good. Jace Brett connects on a Daniels concrete three-pointer to make this a one-point game. He's got seven of the 11 points now for the Vikings. Breck, the leading scorer of this team, just over 15. And that's got another, another mental mistake if Mason Wilty, I think Wilty got into his own head there thinking maybe he got away with a travel that's on and then just let that one go. Yeah, that's five turnovers now for the Wildcats. Five turnovers for the Vikings. Now the Wildcats come in averaging about 14 turnovers a game, so they you know put themselves in this position too many times. Shots are going to be no good. Lipstick was able to save that one, but it ended in the hands of the Wildcats. Wilson drops it over to Petty, gives one extra pass. Gallmeyer is going to try to get Agner down low. And a great heads-up play by Carter Agner as he was losing his footing. He was able to get that one to go out of bounds off of a Lipsick player. Again, good defense by the Vikings through the double up on him, you know, front him and back him, so he really didn't have a place to go towards the basket. Just had to knock it off the guy to get it, the ball back for themselves. Three-pointer on its way. Gallmeyer can't connect. Agner right there is able to poke it away, but ends up out of bounds. So we'll go back to the Vikings. 12 to 11, the Wildcats still on top. Just under six left to go here in the half. Opportunity for uh, Lipsick to take the lead. Brett can't connect on that floater. Rebound is pulled down by Gavin Howell. Here's Howell trying to feed Agner down low. Agner working through the double team. Nice footwork to create space. But can't finish. Almost was able to get his own rebound. Then stuck his hand to take it back away. As Petty is able to finish, but that was all thanks to the effort of Carter Agner, who did not give up on that. And even though he missed his shot, continued to try to take it away, and eventually ends up in the hands of Petty, who finishes. Yeah, Agner out there really fighting hard, you know, putting in the effort tonight. Oh, nice pass on the inside. I don't even know how they got through there. I went off the mark, ends up going back to Delphus. Trying to go quickly. Here's Gallmeyer working through the screen, gets that one to go. Isaac Gallmeyer gets his first two of the night. And Jefferson is out to their largest lead of the game. They're on top by seven. Or excuse me, they're on top by five. 16 to 11. Delphus doing a nice job of shutting down that middle, not letting those guys in there. They want to throw that entry pass, the Vikings do, but there's just no, no place to put it in. Jefferson doing a nice job with their spacing. That floater's no good. Rebound comes back down to the Wildcats. They've been able to string together some pretty good offensive possessions. Wilson's three-pointer on its way. That one's going to be no good. Howell with the rebound, put back off the rim, gets his own rebound, third opportunity. Ends up being good for the Wildcats, and now they are on top seven as Howell has his first two of the game. Coming in the game averaging just 1.8 points a game, so he's already hit his average. Three-point try is up, no good. Great job getting his own rebound. There's nobody had marked him out, but he can't get the follow-up. Howell comes up with it, pushes it down to Wiltsy. Great seal by Agner as Wiltsy's able to get it in for two. And Jefferson on a nice run, stretches the lead out to nine. That's seven points now for Wilsey. And we're going to have a timeout. Lipton wants to see if they can all Delphus Jefferson's momentum. They're going to talk about it. We'll step aside as well and be back.
Wood is brought to you by Lee's here with Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's and all your kids needs. Lee's here with Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Welcome back to Lipstick High School. Nate Garlock alongside Dar Nevergall. And the Wildcats have gone on a little bit of a run here. That They've opened up a nine-point lead. The Vikings took the timeout, trying to see if they can't regroup, get things going on offense. And the Wildcats have done it on, on the strength of a seven for 11. Two-point shooting, two-point uh, range shooting. And even coming out of the timeout, Lipsick still having a hard time going inside, and a nice bond by Dahlmeyer there. The Vikings had to settle for a tough shot. Jefferson looking to open up this lead. Gretzky gets it to Howe. Three-point try is up. Rattles uh, out, uh, almost uh. down a second time. <laughs> I think Delphus is getting more spacing on their end on their half court, which giving these guys an opportunity to shoot up some of these shots from the outside, where the Vikings just are not getting that kind of spacing. Isaac Rostefer is going to get called for his second. That time just kind of got caught, couldn't get his feet moving quick enough. He's going to take a seat. Carter Agner comes back into the game. Good inbounds pass. Jefferson did a nice job recovering, though, so Lipsick not able to take advantage. Three-point try up and good. Another Dale concrete three-pointer for the Vikings. Mezzarano gets his first points of the night. Oh, he's been trying that all night. <laughs> he hasn't hesitated to throw up those three-pointers. He finally got one to fall down for him. Gallmeyer's going to try his own deep three. That one's going to be short. Rebound down to Agner, fighting through contact. Can't get it to go down, but he's going to make a trip to the free throw line. Agner, a 55% free throw shooter, 72 for 130 coming into this game. Carter Agner with six points already tonight, looking for point number 13. Shot is up and good. One more shot coming for Agner. Lines it up. On its way. This one's going to be no good. Chris Brett comes up with the rebound. Hands it back off to Brant. As the Vikings are looking to get a little bit closer here as we inch towards halftime. We talked about the first time these two teams met, the score being 72-61. This is pretty much 21-14 in this one. This has got all the makings of what they normally would see from these two teams. Shot's going to be short. Howe comes up with the rebound. Facing a little bit of pressure, has to get rid of it. Dahlmeyer thought about the three for a second as his defender started to go off of it. And ends up passing this one off. So Gallmeyer has that three-pointer loaded. He wants to take that shot. He Ball certainly does. At that time. Wilt is going to try the three-pointer, though. That one's going to be off, able to get his own rebound. Takes it all the nice. way in. Off Ooh. the glass. Great move by Mason Wiltsy. 23-14. Good first half for Mason Wiltsy. Howell was able to get that one blocked, but as Jefferson's trying to advance it up into the front court, it gets taken away. A great find down low as Nick Schrader ends up with his first two points. A desperately needed basket for the Vikings. Final 30 seconds before halftime. Jefferson with the basketball in the lead. Pull up in the free throw line. Gallmeyer can't connect. Great extra effort underneath by Kellen Carter, but he can't get it in. And with 15 seconds left to go, it looks like Lipstick's going to try to hold for the last shot. This one gets taken away. Jefferson has it now. Four seconds left to go. They push it up to Wilty. Wilty oh, gets it to out. Agner. Agner all alone under the basket. He's able to finish as the second quarter was all Wildcats. The offense got back on track. And they are going to go to the locker room with the nine. Lead. We'll 
step aside. We'll be back with the third quarter. Watch the boys high school basketball. OSA. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima Walpole Delta St. St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your daily needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken or Homestyle happens here. Welcome back to Lipsick High School. Nate Garlock alongside Darn Evergall. As we are underway here in the second half of this opening sectional matchup between the Delta Jefferson Wildcats and Lipsick Vikings. I'll tell you, Nate, in that first half is really, you know, the, what saved Delta Jefferson, you know, the turnovers and stuff really hurt them, but what really saved them that was two-point shooting, and they were 9 for 16 from the two-point range for 56%. You know, neither team shot fairly, very well the rest of the way, but, you know, that, that two-point range has really helped uh, Delta Jefferson. They've calmed down a lot from those turnovers in that first, you know, first quarter, but, you know, they still have not really put together a real smooth game, and the Vikings just have not been able to really get anything going offensively. Yeah, both teams seem to be settling for that three-point ball a lot more than I'm sure their coaching staff would like. Jefferson, though, finally kind of got away from there that in that second quarter was able to go on that run that really opened the lead up. But outside about that three- or four-minute stretch, it's just been a lot of three-point balls that, quite frankly, haven't really been able to be close to hitting the mark. No, they were two for 12 from three-point range, only 17% in that first quarter our first half and then you look at the Vikings they were only two for nine from three-point range so neither team really shot well from the outside you know the only like I said the only advantage that Delta has had is really on the inside so, Kellen Carter trying to go back inside to Agner that time and a little bit too much on that lob as it ended up right underneath the basket but after the scramble the officials say last touch by the Vikings I've noticed that Delphus has really kind of calmed it down a little bit. They've slowed down, playing a little bit more half-court offense coming out of the, from the break. You know, something I think they need really need towards the latter part of the second quarter. They tried to pick up and get the better shots. There's Carter for two, able to get that turnaround jumper to go. And it's going to be important that some of these other people on Delta Jefferson get going because you can see now, every time that the Wildcats want to go inside, that help defense comes from the backside to make sure that Carter Agner can't touch the basketball. Yeah, that's the first basket by Kellen Carter. Ezrano is able to get that two to go in as a nice answer for the Vikings as he came down, able to put the brakes on and get that one up. That's five points now for that young man. Agner pulls up. He's Whoa. able to get that one to go. Carter Agner showing the mid-range game. And nine points for uh, Carter Agner, averaging about 16 points a game. As Rano thinks about the three-pointer, decides to try to dribble it around. Gets into a little bit of trouble and has it taken away. Gallmeyer had to slow down and come back and get it, but still able to take it to the rim. A little bit of contact, but able to finish through as Jefferson really opening up the lead now. Yeah, the Vikings are going to have to get a timeout pretty soon, you know, kind of calm themselves down a little bit. Try to stop the momentum that Delphus is building right now. Lama's three-point try, no good. Schrader with the rebound, and we're going to have a whistle. Isaac Gallmeyer reached in. He's going to get called for that foul. And that was another thing for Delphus in that first half is they, they're rebounding. They really came on strong in the rebounding. I have them unofficially for 19 rebounds alone in the first half. As Rano throws the brakes oh, on. Why not? Never even really <laughs> leaves the floor, but gets that high arcing shot to go in as he is trying to keep this team in this one. 31-20. Now all they do is get a stop here. Again, Delphus being very patient on offense. Petty with the fake. Good move to work to that left side, but can't get that one to go in. Toronto, he's going to let the three-pointer go. Not a lot of effort in that shot, but he has been pretty accurate here to start the second half, but can't connect on that one. And he's not going to get him off the floor when he shoots it, is he? No. <laughs> Wilty, he's going to pull up for a long two. Oh Gets that my. one to go down. 11 points now for that young man. 
Came in averaging just six points a game and three rebounds a game, and he's now got 11 points. Schrader going to try a three. That one's going to be no good. Agner with the rebound. 13-point lead for the Wildcats. Wiltsy going to go quickly. Now Jefferson going to try to slow things down. Step back jumper. No good for Wiltsy. Brandt able to fly in there to get the rebound. And again, three-point shooting for Lipsick. It's not been on for this third quarter. Whoa. Brandt got turned around as he left his feet, had to get rid of it. I think he anticipated that Lommers was going to turn around, try to cut to the basket. Going to be another turnover. And the Wildcats have really cleaned up that turnovers, but for Lipsick, they continue to be hounded by those mental mistakes. But on the other end, now it is going to be the Wildcats on the turnover as they get called for the moving screen. But they, you know, like when you watch the Vikings on their turnovers and stuff, they, it, they're getting frustrated. You know, they're down by 13. They're, you know, they're, they're just not been able to get anything going offensively consistently enough. And nearly they're just throwing the ball away, you know, where they're not been able to run their half court offense at all. Paris, he checked into the game during the last stoppage. Another three-point try on its way. That one's going to be short. Great hustle by Paris to save it, and we're going to have a whistle. And this one, I believe, is going to go on Rostifer, and if it does, that'll be his third. Vikings now 0 for 14, or 0 for 4 here in the second half in three-point range. 2.42 left to go in this third quarter. This game is flying by as Lipsick has got to find a way to get some points up on the board. Another three-point try on its way. This time it's good as Jace Brett connects on a Dale's Concrete three-pointer. Call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Brett now in double figures with 10 points. Shot is up. That one's going to be no good. So Lipsick now with an opportunity to make this a single-digit lead. Left all alone that time. And they could not connect. As right now, Lipsick, you know, you almost it almost looks like uh, a lot of times what you see teams when they're on a Saturday night on a back-to-back, -back, mm -hmm. start seeing those tired yeah. legs. A lot of these shots have been short. You wouldn't think you'd see that, but you know, it is a weekday night game. As Wiltsy's not showing any signs of tired legs as he continues to put up big numbers for the Wildcats tonight. Yeah, 14 points now for him. Yeah, you're, you're right, Nate. And they seem lethargic, basically, is what it looks like. I mean, just not in any kind of groove at all. Good hands by Sikos. Knocked that one out of bounds. 132 left to go in the quarter. More substitutions. Number 12, Lane Vieira, coming in for Ellipsic. And Elijah Petty coming back in for the Wildcats. You think back to that game just a couple weeks ago where they won by 11 points against this Delphus team, and you wonder how coming into this game, you know, were you thinking too much about the fact that you'd already beaten the Wildcats? What you can't do anytime you get close to tournament time or get into tournament time, nothing matters when it came to a regular season. Here's Paris looking for somewhere to go with it. Another three-pointer is up. This one's going to be no good as Lipsick continues to be off the mark from behind the arc. They're going to get another opportunity, though, as this one is going to be, I don't know quite what happened on that one. It didn't look like it was blocked, but it fell way short of the basket. And finally, after a scramble underneath, a lot of contact, we're going to have a foul. And I think he was thinking he got fouled on that one. Brought the shot up really short, but no call on that. And that's one thing we haven't seen in this game yet either is a lot of fouls being called. I mean, you know, there have only been one player go to the foul line. That was Agner, and he was one for two in that first half. But nobody else has even touched the free throw stripe. So the ball must have ended up out of bounds. I thought that we had a foul call on the floor, but last touch by the Vikings. So it's going to go back to Je Delphus Jefferson with under a minute left to go here in the third. Everything going the Wildcats' way right now, and all they have to do is just 
you know, run their offense and not even try to force anything. And that's a nice backdoor right there. Great execution that time by the Wildcats. Penny able to finish at the basket. They extend their lead out to 15. That's seven points now for Petty. Paris going to try the three-pointer. That one's going to be no good. Wiltsy comes up with the rebound. Wildcat coaching staff, I think they called for it to slow down, but Howell decides to try, to try the three-pointer from the corner. Great job by Agner. Step back three by Wiltsy. No good. Agner with the tough rebound. Lots of contact. And this one is going to go out of bounds and stay with Jefferson. There are going to be 2.9 seconds left to work for them before the quarter comes to an end. Well, I'll tell you, Dave, you got to be impressed with the Carter Agner because he's really working his butt off out there. You know, he's been in on every contact underneath the basket. He's kind of trying to rule that inside, and he's done a great job of that. You can see Agner right now trying to maybe adjust a contact as they try to clean up the sweat off of the floor. Oh, yeah, he's going to adjust it. He just hands it to yep. the coach. <laughs> Only a couple seconds left. Hold on to it, and I'll make it work here afterwards. Throw it in a glass of water. Don't worry about it. 2.9 seconds left to go. Jefferson triggers the inbounds. Going to have to hand it off quickly. It's a long 2.9 seconds, and Jefferson doesn't get a shot off. Three quarters have come and gone. The Wildcats on top big, 38-23. We're going to step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's. Favorite crispy chicken and Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your care and needs. Lee's Favorite crispy chicken, where home style happens here. Welcome back. Nate Garlock alongside Dar Nevergall. Fourth quarter just about underway here at Lipsick High School as Delphus Jefferson has come into this opening sectional matchup. And their offense really has dictated what has been going on. They've forced a lot of turnovers and mental mistakes out of the Lipsick Vikings. And if they don't find a way to get that offense going here early, they're not going to be able to come back in this one. No, absolutely not. And the real thing, too, is they've only held uh, Ty Lommers for Lipsy, the four points, and that all came in the first half. He's not scored here in the second half. And, and they've held Lipsy in that third quarter to just seven points in the third quarter. And he just came out of the locker room. And you thought maybe coming out of the locker room, you know, they were going to you know, get something going, and it just kind of fizzled out again for him. So Carter Agner whistled for that foul here early in the quarter. Lipsick, though, not able to take advantage. This one's going to get pushed up ahead. Three-point try by Hal on its way. That one's no good. Schrader with the rebound. And the Vikings really have been living and dying with that three-point shot. And they've only hit two three-pointers, you know, two for 17 tonight. So, you know, they haven't been able to get the ball inside to get anything going in there. Too hard on that try, but Schrader does a nice job getting that rebound. Lommers with the basketball. Brett trying to work through traffic, gets that one off. Can't get it to go down, but he will make a trip to the free throw line. This is what Lipsick's going to have to do. They're going to have to find a way to uh, extend this game, slow this clock down a little bit, try to find ways of scoring without any time coming off. And Brett, a 70% free throw shooter, so. Jace Brecht, though, not able to convert on the first. Yeah, they need those points when the clock's not running, that's for sure. And, you know, you get your, one of your better free throw shooters at the line for Norman. He wasn't able to connect on it. Breck second shot on its way. This one is good. It's 11 points now for Jace Breck. Isaac Rostifer coming back into the game for the Wildcats as Kellen Carter will take a seat. The Vikings need stops. That's what they need right now. They're trying to throw on that full court pressure, try to get them. Jefferson does a nice job of passing out of trouble. How for three. That one's going to be no good. Long rebound ends up in the hands of Gallmeyer. 
Now, if you're Jefferson, the clock is on your side. They're going to try to get Agner. Agner, turn around, jump oh, that one's my. good. Able to catch and shoot in rhythm. A beautiful move by Agner. He's got 11 points now. Nice move. This is what they need. Jace Brett comes down quickly. He has an answer, but they've got to be able to get some stops. Jace Breck now with 13 points on the night. Yeah, they can't afford to just match baskets at this stage, you know, to be down 40 to 26. Wiltsy just splits the defense, went right down the middle, but he can't connect. Got to hurry it up a little bit, guys. Three-pointer on its way. That one's going to be no good. Ty Lommers continues to struggle tonight scoring as he hasn't had anything go in since the first quarter. Yeah, four points in that first half. Nothing to hear in the second half when you get from your leading scorer. Agner does a nice job of getting Lommers off his feet and a bite on the pump fake. And then Agner takes that contact and go to the free throw line. And Agner's a strong kid underneath, boy. You just look at him, you know, he, he pretty much has had command of the middle, and that's why uh, the Vikings, too, on, de on, you know, on offense have not been able to get on the inside because he's pretty much taken up that space. Carter Agner leaves this one short. Ready lines up a second shot. It's on its way. That one's no good. Lomers comes up with the rebound. Lomers off the side of the rim, gets his own rebound. Put back is good. And it's Ty Lomers is going to go to the free throw line for an and one opportunity. A much needed basket and a much needed time. They are not out of this one yet, but they have got to get the offense going. And they've got to get that young man going. And he knows that he's their leader on this Viking team. And he knows he's got to put the effort in here in the fourth quarter to get this team back, this team back into this. Lomer's able to convert. Back down to an 11-point lead. Jefferson facing a little bit of pressure. They're able to get out of it. Wilty gets trapped on that far side, though. And we're going to have a timeout for anything happen on that far side. Elvis Jefferson takes the timeout. We will as well and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Rescue Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your favorite needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, more home style happens here. I'd also like to thank tonight's three point sponsor. Dale's Concrete, call Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Delphus Jefferson called the timeout as they were in a little bit of trouble on that far sideline as that Viking pressure has really picked up. They're trying to find a way to create more possessions and they're able to right there. Passed up ahead and that one oh. is going to be no good. Those are the opportunities that Lipstick just cannot afford to not be able to cash in on. No, because they're not getting second opportunities at the basket either. You know, Delphi's doing a great job of rebounding. And what a backbreaker of, of a play that time as those events looked like it was going to be Lipsick creating an extra scoring opportunity. They couldn't cash in. Jefferson does a great job of getting a three-pointer on the other side. And now a three-point try, a two by Agner. And it is just like that, a 45-29 game. Wow, and they got that three-pointer for Gavin Howell, who averaged just under two points a game and now has five tonight. So their role players are doing a nice job for the Delphi Jefferson tonight as well. Lipsick continuing to struggle from behind the arc. Bombers lets three Wildcats fly by as he's able to put that one in. Yeah, caught him by surprise too. You can see on his face. Wiltsy. Able to get across the timeline. Gets it over to Gallmeyer. And we're going to have a foul. 
As Lipsick continuing to put that pressure and they were guarding a double team that time on Howe. He's gonna get he's gonna get fouled. This one's gonna go on Nick Schrader. It's gonna be his second. But only the second team foul here in the second half. So Lipsick can still afford to be pretty aggressive here defensively without any risk of putting the Wildcats at the free throw line. Just out of the reach of Brandt that time. Delphins can be very patient on offense right now. They've got all the advantage going their way. And play a little keep away out here. Agner looking to create some space, has to put it back on the floor. So now the Wildcats are just content with running clock. At some point, the Vikings are going to have to start getting aggressive, throwing the double teams, causing the fouls, something. Lommers underneath, and now we're going to have a whistle as Lommers tried to get the rejection on Kellen Carter, and he's going to pick up the foul. Kellen Carter, he's going to go to the free throw line. He'll shoot two. An 82% free throw shooter, 9 for 11 coming into this season, or into this game. Carter able to connect on the first. Number 12, Lee Merrill. 15 point game, 46 31, 311 left to go. Winner of tonight's game will move on to play Pandora Gilboa on Friday night at Pandora. Sectional title will be on the line. Three-pointer up, and Ooh. that one is good. Brevin Brandt hits a deep Dales concrete three-pointer. Brandt, a 39% three-point shooter. I'm getting the ball a little bit more now. Agner trying to move in and out of some traffic. Finally able to get rid of it. Three-point try on its way, and what an answer. Kellen Carter connects on his own Dale's concrete three-pointer to push it back out to a 16-point game. That's seven points now for Carter, all in the second half. Nice adjustment that time as Lipsick was able to get that one to go down. And that was Lane Vieira. 50 to 36, Lipstick takes the timeout. We're gonna take it as well and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpole, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. 224 left to go in this one. Delphus Jefferson in control, but Lipstick still trying to show signs of life as we saw Lane Vieira put one in right before the timeout. They come out continuing to show pressure. Yeah, they need to get this ball back. Going to have another foul as this one is going to go on Vieira. It's going to be his first. It is the team's fourth here of the quarter, so next foul will send the Wildcats to the free throw line. There is going to quickly pick up a second foul, and now it's going to be Gallmeyer that goes to the free throw line. Gallmeyer, a 72% free throw shooter. Gallmeyer's had a quiet night scoring so far. And just two points for the senior. Bejarano coming back into the game for Lipsick, as is Brevin Brandt. Correction, that's now five points for Gallmeyer. Make it six. Gallmeyer averages just under nine points a game. Not too far off of his season average after that trip to the free throw line. Three point try is up. That one's going to be no good. Mason Wilson comes up with the rebound, has to pull it back, and just gets it out of trouble. Agner oh does a nice job of saving that one as it looked like that one's destined to be a turnover. 
Yeah, good, good job there by the big guy. Coach Jenny Hoff calling from the bench, trying to get everybody to slow down. He just wants to possess, but we're going to have a travel on Petty. So Lipsick's going to get the ball back. And I'll tell you what, Nate, unofficially that's the first turnover of the second half by the Stelfish Jefferson team after eight turnovers in the first half. That one's going to be off the mark. Agner comes up with the rebound, pushes it up ahead to Howe. Howe gets it back. Uh, Agner can't finish that one. Roberts loses that one out of bounds, but it'll stay with the Vikings. So Jefferson was looking to put an exclamation point on this one on that last trip. Yeah. As Al was trying to feel at or trying to lead Agner for that dunk. And then they're able to take this one away on the inbounds. Gonna be a foul. This one's gonna go on Brandt. And the inevitable let's play football, football chance have started. <laughs> Which tells you right off the bat who won the football game earlier. So the Wildcats, they're going to march to the other side of the floor. Isaac Gallmeyer is going to go to the free throw line. First one is good. So the Wildcats now scoring into the 50s. About just above their uh, season average. And if they're able to hold on to this lead, which looks like they'll be able to, they're going to have their work uh, um, out for them here on Friday night as they will have to travel to Gilboa. But Marzorano not ready to go home quite yet. Gets that three-pointer to go. That's now 10 points on the night for him. Petty with a nice adjustment oh, as yeah. he's able to get to the rim. Textbook way of beating that full court pressure ends up in the easy layup. Lammers can't connect. And we're going to have another foul as this will be on Jace Breck. But as we mentioned, Delphus Jefferson, if they hold on, they're going to take on the Rockets of Pandora. Pandora having another fantastic season. It'll be a very difficult test for the Wildcats, but you know, if they're able to get their offense clicking early like they did tonight and then able to kind of get away from being as three-point happy as they were in stretches, which really slowed yeah. down their offense, you know, with Agner underneath, with the way Wiltsy was shooting tonight, I mean, they have some of the pieces in place to be able to pull off that upset. Yeah, and then they got Gallmeyer coming in here at the foul line towards the end, and he's really been very effective there. That was his first miss, the second one there, but he hit uh, four in a row there. But you're right, you know, and rebounding has really been a key for Delphus tonight, too. They've out-rebounded this Viking team. You know, I've got them unofficially for 30 rebounds when they only came in averaging just under 22 rebounds a game. Connor Guevara come into the game. He missed that last three-pointer. Substitutions for the Wildcats. Yeah, that's 25 three-point attempts by the Lipsick tonight. By Lipsick tonight, and they've only hit five of them. See uh, number three, Kellen Brotherwood into the game for the Wildcats for the first time tonight, as is Zach Houts. Some more substitutions coming in for both teams. We're seeing number 12, Logan Gossett. And number 10, Jace Harder for Delphus Jefferson. And Avery Parrish for Lipsick, along with number four, Clark Schrader. So both coaches going to their bench here in the last few moments of this one. And Gallmeyer trying to get the foul that time and a little bit of a late whistle by the officials. As they're trying to get Gallmeyer an opportunity here to get out of the game and get Sikos in. Not able to connect on that one. House able to take that one away. Well, this be a tough loss for the Vikings who had an up and down season all season long. They were, you know, 10 and 12 coming into this, you know, match. And, you know, they just were riding a th uh, three-game losing streak. And just a tough game for them all the way around. Adelphus Jefferson, they come over to Lipsick. 
They come in the lower seed, but they're going to come away with the victory as they win 56 to 39. We still got a little bit of business to take care of here. We'll step aside. We're going to have some discussions. When we come back, we'll have tonight's Dolly Hustle Award winner. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Boys High School Basketball on WOSA. Welcome back to Lipsick High School. Nate Garlock alongside Dar Nevergal. And it is time for tonight's Dolly Hustle Award winner. Check out highlights of tonight's Dolly Hustle Award winner on our WOSN YouTube page. We had a couple of different options tonight, Dar, that we really could have gone with um, on that Wildcat side. But when it was all said and done, the job from the very beginning to the end, not just on the offensive side, what he was able to do defensively as well. Carter Agner, a very well-deserving feat for him tonight. Oh, I think so. I mean... Carter Agner like, was basically the king of the paint. I mean, he pretty much dominated on the inside. He got the rebounds for them. He was just a, a workman underneath that basket. And he just, just kind of took up all the space. And he ended up with 13 points. But that's really not what his job was tonight. His job was to keep the Vikings out of the paint. And he was able to do that, force them to shoot it from the outside where they weren't real effective tonight. So I give uh, Carter Agner all the work. You, you see him out there. You know, he was just sweating uh, all night long, just working as hard as he could. You know, Agner did a lot of that heavy lifting. He got help from a lot of his friends here tonight, specifically Mason Wiltsey. He was another one that we um, contemplated for the Stolle Award. You know, he did, didn't come in averaging a whole lot of points tonight, but he got things going from the outside. We saw him make a couple of nice moves on the inside. And as we mentioned, moving forward, Delphus Jefferson now moves on to play Pandora Gilboa um, at Pandora on Friday night. They're going to need more than Carter Agner. Yeah, they and, absolutely are. And when you look at guys like Mason Wilsey, Isaac Gallmeyer, there are some nice pieces on this team that if they can get going and clicking on one night, I mean, it would be an upset, but that's an upset that can happen. It is, and and that and the Petty kid as well. You know, he came out firing some deep threes out there. You know, he hit those right off the bat, you know, got them going a little bit. You know, so, yeah, their role players are really going to have to come in against this Pandora team to try to dominate against a, a couple – great players over in Pandora Gilboa who's having an outstanding season. But, you know, Delvis, you know, they they look good tonight. You know, they, they worked hard tonight. You know, they did everything they had to do, you know, to get this win. And, you know, let's see how much they got to carry over on Friday night, though, against Pandora. Lipstick season comes to an end. They will finish the year 10 and 13 overall. A bit of a rough season for them. Um, you know, they have to play that NWC schedule. They got to play that PCL schedule. It is a gauntlet year in and year out. A lot of things good happening on the Viking side of things as well. Ty Lommers really had a spectacular season, finishing second team all NWC and all PCL. We saw Jace Breck tonight. He led this team in scoring on the season. A lot of good pieces over there as well. It was fun to watch them. Just was a little bit of an off night. Couldn't quite get the shooting going from outside. And once they got behind, they just could not find a way to get themselves back in this one. No, they, they couldn't. And, and, but you look down across their roster, Breck is just a junior. Uh, Lommers is just a junior. Uh, so they're, you know, those two guys will be back next year. They only got a, two seniors on this roster for uh, the Lipsy Vikings, so they got a lot to look forward to next year, that's for sure. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. So that's just about going to wrap it up for us here at Lipstick High School. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors one final time. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Dale's Concrete, and Stolly Insurance. We appreciate everything that you guys do for us. also like to thank our crew, Jacob doing all the heavy lifting for us, getting everything set up, making sure we sound good, making sure this game gets brought to you right. Does a great job as always. We appreciate everything you do for us, buddy. One final time, the Delphus Jefferson Wildcats come to Lipsick, and they're going to walk away with the tournament victory. They survive and advance. The Lipsick Vikings go home, and the Wildcats move on to face Pandora Gilboa Friday night at Pandora High School. It is the greatest time of the year. As we are in tournament basketball season, couldn't ask for anything better. And a great friend of ours used to remind us all the time, there's nothing better than high school better. playoff basketball. In his honor, we'd also like to remind everybody it was a great day to wear shorts. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.